I genuinely want to cause people to explode, Jordan, in the future. I, f- true story, when I used to work at a gas station, welcome. And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Ben. That's Pedro. That's Jordan. The hell? Are you Jordan? Yeah. Are you sure? Pretty sure. Do you, do you I mean, like, it looks like Jordan to me. Do you, do you like, want to have a like, sudden urge to eat an insect? or? <laughs> no, no, not really. All right. I'm just... Make, making sure. Anyway, together with you, Shadowrealm Dynamic, watching us live on Twitch, helping us form Cocaine Voltron. Before we get started, we do like to see what's going on in each other's life organs. Man, I spent this afternoon murdering foxes. All the foxes. I was on a foxy little genocide in Horizon Zero Dawn because I needed a <laughs> fox skin, and that was not a common drop. I went all over that damn map. I lost track. I probably killed 40 foxes. To get that fox skin, to get this one thing that I wanted. Been having fun with that game, but we'll talk more about that at 11. One thing I did buy for the studio is a collection I was talking to Pedro. When you think about $100, now it, it was some fans and some extra stuff, but like just side items, you know, appetizers. You think about it like, well, that's a big box of fans, $100 of fans. I'm like, $100? Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's about right. The You're jerks. lucky I got the third one because <laughs> my first guess was two. <laughs> <laughs> I got some um, Stufu editions, the ultra low noise Nocto fans for the Threadripper. They, I guess they're quieter. They say they're quieter than the um, moral of the story. If anybody needs 640 millimeter Corsair fans, I got some. So, yeah, that's it. Oh, and by the way, it took me like two hours because I had to remove my video card with the up part of a blind and stab it. Now go back and uh, watch the uh, uncut version. (laughs) If you want to get the rest of that. Unfortunately, you don't get to actually watch him do that. That would have been great. That. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) It's for the best, man. It's for the best. What's new with you, Pedro Mateus, the person who never writes anything down, always leaves me guessing at the beginning of each and every show. So I have nothing to throw to. Yeah, no, there's absolutely nothing going on here. I've been busy. Work has uh, not let up. So, yeah, there, there's that. Oh, I suppose I've been playing. Um, people are still getting mm-hmm. sick. Yes. Ah. <laughs> and doctors still need laptops in order to be able to do their jobs. So, yeah. <laughs> but they got to they gotta download some wheat leeches from, like, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know, fileshare.net or whatever. <laughs> that, Download more leech.com. <laughs> that cocaine's not going to get in the blood by itself. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta get rid of the ghost. Uh, if only. <laughs> yeah. Anything new with you, Jordan? Uh, I mean, I, uh, it's, it's, it's been two weeks since I got my shot, so I'm, I'm fully vaccinated. I'm feeling pretty good. There's no side effects or anything. Nice. Seems like it's uh, go, going pretty well, though. Uh, yeah, I, I finished I finish the uh, the Nuzlocke on uh, on Fridays. Okay, for uh, the everyone else, the fuck is that? Because I still don't know. That means nothing to me. It's like a made up. All right, all right. So, okay. So in the base game, Pokemon don't die, right? So in a Nuzlocke, you run through the game, and every time a Pokemon faints... You release it so you can't use it. So it's Pokemon with permadeath. Wait, so um, like, what, what's like, uh, did you get like fainting couch, like shit to like make them unfaint or what? Do you give them sniffing? You, you go to the Poke you, Center yeah, and you, it does and the ding, 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 and or they're back you, to life. Or you, or you <laughs> pump them full of drugs. That's the other one. Um, yes. Pump, pump them full of drugs. But um, I, I, got, I got all, I got all 16 badges in the game. I decided I could. I could uh, grind for another three weeks and try to take on the f- very final penultimate trainer, or I could just run up to the final boss and just kill myself because I don't want to do it. Uh, and I've extracted the maximum amount of fun. So all my dudes got murdered by a Pikachu. So now I need uh, I need something else to do on Fridays. So stay tuned for that. I'm also I also started streaming some uh, tabletop development on Mondays. Hopefully, I'm gonna try and do a little bit more of that throughout the week. I think and we got something soon. for um this upcoming Friday. Me and you. Ah, yeah, we got the streets. Streets are er, ang, ang, angry Grr, road. Streets rage. Er. Yeah. We get to play with swordfish. It's the password. Yes. Ooh, yeah. 
Swordfish has password. Unlike horse, no password for horse. <laughs> the, 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 por- the horse is only accessible via Telnet, man. It you still want uses security web. with it? Yeah, <laughs> we- Telnet over web, man. That's the most secure thing in the universe. It's the Steam Analytics. The update. Oh man. Okay. The X12's the future. Dude, it's the future. I'm very excited <laughs> about this. And we're talking about the latest version of Proton Experimental. And it's not necessarily Proton Experimental by itself. That got me excited. Nay. It's, uh, you know, let's just go over that real quick. This has uh, all the additions from Proton 6.3-5. And it's even got the NVIDIA's NVAPI GPU support. That's going to be disabled by um, default. And the Vulcan children window, which is great. You know, Vulcan for kids. Get them, get them started. Get them hooked young. Now. <laughs> The big thing in this, which is kind of like a little side note, like updated VK D3D Proton to 2.4. Why is that a thing? Well, uh, that's another thing I'll get to in a minute. The new version of um, VK D3D, which is what you're going to be using if you're going to be playing um, DX12 titles, as opposed, you know, we have um, DXVK for DirectX 11. And I just happened to get Tomb Raider, Ginger Tomb Raider, with the uh, robot dinosaurs, the game. And. Um, Horizon Chase Turbo? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, Dora the Explorer. <laughs> exactly. So, I always got to get like, does this thing even work? Uh, and it did. It launched in, on the little 2060, on high, at 1080p, it was, like, it had hover hands on 60. It was, like, 55, and sometimes it would be, like, 62, and I'm like, well, I guess it's playable. I wouldn't want to be able to stream it at any point, you know, taking that, you know, 7 to 10% performance hit. But, I dropped this in, before it was released on Proton Experimental. Now you can just click play. Legit, the latest version of EKD 3D Proton, you're getting between 10, 15% just free performance. And going from the hover hand around 60 to like 65 to 70. Relatively stable. Very impressed by that. And I'm always thrown like back from these things because when you think, oh, everything's about as good as it can be. Like, nope. We could do better than this. Life is good, but it could be better. Yeah, uh, th- this, yes. is, this is one that now that's in Proton Experimental, I want to take another crack at it with um, Assassin's Creed Valhalla because there's some performance issues with uh, DX12 on the 10 series. But if they uh, if they uh, have hammered, hammered it out, then I'm looking forward to some Viking rap, rap battles. Maybe that's what I'm going to do on Friday. Mm. Maybe if I if, if that if that if the performance is good enough that I can like actually stream it. Yeah. Well, Joshy wasn't happy enough um, with that little bit of performance, you know, that 10% performance bump. So he went ahead and threw in, um, now this is a, that's it, yeah. So it's merge request to add a host visible. So basically it's uh, the, is this right? Like the resize bar type thing deal? Yes. Uh, (laughs) Although this will affect just about everything that's visible to any kind of VRAM allocation. So just about everything. It'll probably also affect bar. Like he says, it'll take advantage of large or resizable uh, bar addresses if available. So, yeah. And we're talking yeah. about a performance built <laughs> from 83, 84 to 92 to 94. So about 12% in Horizon Zero Dawn, which neat. I'll take free performance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I was at least expecting another couple of years before like DX12 performance via Vulcan under Linux was going to get like to the point where these games are regularly playable. I am I am pleasantly surprised at the I, progress. I've just been pumping winning. money into this, this like is, nobody's uh, business. Oh yeah. To Jordan's <laughs> point there, yeah, I was thinking probably at least another year then maybe we'll start seeing closer parity with DXVK. Mm-hmm. It looked like DX12 is going to be jumping ahead of that. I'm curious to go back and see if I can finish control now because I just got to a point in control to where it was just too chucky to play. But th- this led me on a little side thought because I- I've just noticed a, over the past couple of months, an explosion of Linux audio doesn't work. It, it is like its own thing. Ladies and gentlemen, I think I finally cracked it. I, I-, I understand where it's coming from. Game, oh. Games are too easy to play under Linux now. <laughs> so I, y- you can't say, well, I can't play my game X, Y, Z under Linux. I'm like, hey, you can use click the fucking play button type shit. Uh, my audio <laughs> doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. That, 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 that old gem, despite the fact that like, 
audio under Linux, even under a pulse audio is like a fucking Everest ahead of <laughs> audio experience under windows. Yes. Uh, it, yeah. Well, the hilarity of it is because they know less about audio than they did about gaming. And, Oh, but anyway, that's my theory. Maybe I'll write it up in CERN. Stay tuned. I'll send you a copy. A uh, couple of new games this week, starting with something that's kind of hard to call a game. No, it's it's it's, it's, it's not it's not a game, and they, they they say as much. Oh, fine. Well, we're talking yeah. about the evolving word world. Catalyst Wake demo. After three apocalyptic events, known as Catalyst devastated. I downloaded this. The demo's free. Go check it out yourself. Pedro, what's missing from this carousel? <laughs> You know, that thing that uh, Steam kind of requires you to have a trailer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, that, fuck that. That, that. <laughs> that might be a little too spoilery. So if you go and you, you read through this, because I got a little confused by it as well. So it's a motion comic. Um, they say it's a static visual novel. Uh, this is uh, a sequel to another one of these that was released earlier. Uh, the demo essentially serves to bring you up to speed and it gives you the first chapter of the new one. But, you know... Marvel has been putting out motion comics. DC's been putting out motion comics. Like you'd think you had to cut, be able to like cut together a trailer, no? Mm. Or yeah, just completely lied through your teeth on your trailer. Uh, it worked for that island. So here's where I'm at with it. <laughs> In true LGC fashion, I didn't read anything it said on the den. I just downloaded it. And, okay, let's. I, I clicked through, waiting to get to the game, and, and said thanks for playing the demo. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, uh, <laughs> Saved you down I, the. I mean, I mean, like. Oh, hang yeah, on. I, mean, I, I should you not. F twelve is mapped to one of the face buttons on the controller to take screenshots. Excellent. Oh, uh, they want people to do their um accidentally take marketing screenshots. For them. Okay. <laughs> because <laughs> I I was curious. I saw config controller loaded, so I picked it up and I did that. It's a, thanks for taking a screenshot. Uh, no, I'm out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't know. Um, I, I, I guess, like, Steam isn't a terrible place to put up your motion comic. I would think, that I, without without there really being, like, any sort of dedicated storefront for that kind of thing. I see why you might, you might want to, like, go to Steam, because visual novels and motion comics have quite a bit of overlap there, mm-hmm. so. I don't, and there's I, I don't those know. outright text adventures, which, again, I would struggle to call a game, but okay. <laughs> Choose your own adventure. I, it, some work had went into this. I mean, there was some narration. Mm. So, I mean, maybe it'll turn out to be great. I just, I, it's my fault. I should have read what it said. It clearly says in the text, <laughs> visual novel. Then I went, yeah. nope. But. Listen, we don't read things on the next game. That's what I'm all. saying, man. That's why I was like, la gasp. Like, you, what, what did you do? That, that, that violates I, I, something listen, in our contract. I, yeah, I broke the rules. I scrolled up. <laughs> yeah. So, um, hero raid. Yes, uh, which I want to call X Heroes Raid because there's a big X on the little uh, logo on the top right of the Steam Store page. I mean, but no, not, it's just it, Heroes Raid. You can barely <laughs> see it. I mean, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, no, I guess that comes from the developer being called X Lionheart, and um, yeah, I'm looking at that combat, and besides the gigant spider. Which uh, just about says it all when it comes to uh, the native um, English speaking abilities of the developer. I'm not going to criticize them for that because mine aren't great either. But the spongy enemies though, looking at that trailer and seeing the damage numbers rack up and the HP bar barely decreasing. You you really don't want to show that on your trailer, but here we are. <laughs> I I mean, like that's kind. Of, it's so so. It's clearly a monster under clone. It's in early access. That's what they're going that, for. Yes, <laughs> but that that is kind of the deal with Monster Hunter, where a bunch of, where everything is a fucking HP sponge, and the the goal here is it's kind of like a boss rush. They they want you to focus on the the raid aspect and the preparing for the raid aspect, which you know I I, I feel that genre has kind of lost a bit of steam, but it definitely has some diehards. Like every time a new Monster Hunter game comes out, like I don't hear people shut the fuck up about Monster Hunter for three weeks. <laughs> what is Monster Hunter exactly? It's like it's a game where you kill HP st- sponges for occasional drops that you can use to craft mm-hmm. better items to kill bigger HP sponges. That's that like, you have to kill the same boss type enemy three times in order to get the full armor set. 
made out of a tide. So, 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 so basically, on, if, if, what, what uh, I'm taking is you're basically describing WoW without a subscription. No, yeah, I, I, I was literally going to say, if you like the end game of World of Warcraft and that's all you really care about, Monster Hunter is for you. 100%. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. We need more sports mm-hmm. games on Linux. Right. I mean, you, you'd think a podcast featuring like a German Brit, uh, a half Brazilian and, and, and a Portuguese guy, um, you'd be a little bit more enthusiastic about a footy game. Well, you'd be wrong. This is Hate it. Pixel Cup <laughs> Soft, Hate Soccer thing. Ultimate Edition. Uh, and it is basically Sega Genesis... Super Nintendo Soccer. Um, that's what it is. That's it doesn't pretend to be anything else. Uh, and it's, it's got some cute pixel art. And listen, here's here's the deal. We there are certain games that are horrifically underrepresented under Linux. Sports games are definitely one of them. Yeah. Uh, so it, like any addition to that canon is noteworthy. And there there you go. Apparently, it's fairly well received for what it is. So. Check it out. Yeah. If you and really I'm looking at the graphics soccer. and uh, that reminds me a lot of the Captain Zubasa games from back in the day. Someone's going to have a word with you. <laughs> I don't know what that is. It's, it's some weeb bullshit. <laughs> oh, Anime obviously it's about some weeb bullshit. people playing football where they would uh, kick the ball and you could see the curvature of the earth as the ball went flying like three meters across the stadium. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> um, I mean, uh, it's like 2.5D soccer to go to. Uh, is there multiplayer? Uh, there is. A split uh, screen, so yeah. local only. Yeah, lo- <laughs> local, local multiplayer, which. Uh, why are we Why are we even having this conversation? You, you know, you know what? Spe- speaking of, let's 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 fucking talk about base jump for a second, okay. because speaking, speaking of games that only have local multiplayer. Well, this, this in no way would this ever require multiplayer, though. Right, this this competitive yeah. <laughs> action platformer thing. Um, that deliberately I, shows two players on screen at any one time, yes? Yeah. <laughs> See, I, I I don't know. Then then you brought up you brought up like Smash Bros. Okay, this is what uh, I said. I, yeah. To me, you know, I'm not terribly familiar with Smash Bros, but I mean to me it looked like Smash Bros on a hella budget with platforming. Uh, yeah, ex- except like the 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 action in Smash Bros is I don't, I don't know, like more, more smashing. This is like splash bros. You're like, they're like throwing water at each other. And like, it doesn't look like it's doing damage, Get but like wet. clearly their HP parses are going down. Like, yeah, no, it's like yeah. really, um, simple looking, look powerful shake. with annoying have, screen nope. effects. Oh, yeah. That, yeah. Like when, 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 I, ooh, I was, I was, I was, I was watching the trailer. I'm like, what the fuck? What, what, what is even happening? Maybe, maybe, maybe don't shake the screen so much so I can actually look at the gameplay. Yeah, wow. no, no. Wow. We go back yeah. to I guess w- what's better, a uh, shitty trailer or no trailer? Yeah. I'll yeah. take shitty trailer. <laughs> at least you can at least you can kind of see what's going on. At least you can see. Yeah. And you, you I, get I'm a shitty trailer get credit for like an attempt was made though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with, yeah. With, I don't I don't know why you need shaky pick cam and like hipster pic. Or no, it's not even hipster pixel. Pixel looks like flash. Like, um uh, I I would have left the zoom crash effect. Like, hopefully that's not in the game. You did that for the trailer. Leave that out. Yes. Um, this is something we were talking about earlier in the show. So there's a Crash Drive 3 because, yes. believe it or not, there's a Crash Drive 1 and 2. This is not always the case what? as we've learned covering games. I'm like, wait, what? Where the other ones go? <laughs> what do what, what wish you guys actually own, apparently? Both of us own <laughs> yes. this. And this absolutely comes across as something that Pedro and I were like, hey, let's extreme this. One day, and we mm-hmm. never messed around with Crash Drive too. But maybe, maybe this no. one. Yeah, uh, the I I remember playing Crash Drive uh, two and actually trying to get into a multiplayer game and succeeding. But I never went back to it, and I'm not entirely sure why. But hey, Crash Drive three is now out, and uh, yeah, you can pick it up. It's uh, fourteen ninety nine pounds, so that's about twenty dollars. Uh, usually, it's currently twenty five percent off. And yeah, it is. It's a, got hats, Pedro. It does have hats. You there's the car customization thing, much like the second one did. And multiplayer, you have two modes. You have race mode. You have oh, oh you have I think I modes. remember why I've only got seven minutes in it. <laughs> yeah, I <Wow>. think, <laughs> I genuinely the Steam version. I think the controller support was busted. Ah, uh. <laughs> well, they do say full controller support on this one. And yeah, no, multiplayer, you have both the, like, traditional 
either racing or king of the hill or whatever or modes the and then you also have the fuck around die. sandbox mode which uh i think that was the server that i joined at the time was the fuck around sandbox mode in crash Rive through but i do need to say a big big thank you to m2h uh who sent us some keys and we have keys much. for this very much appreciate it oh yes <laughs> tell me things like that I mean, <laughs> I did. I, I'm, I'm just more excited <laughs> that you can run this on your CentOS 7 machine. Oh, baby, you know it. <laughs> CentOS 7, 18.04, and 16.04. Um, yep. 5.60 Ti. Don't try to bring any of that 5.60 bullshit up in this. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> can only run under the Ti for me. So I don't know. GTX? GTX 560 or the RX 560? I don't know anymore. Uh, There's hey, too man, many. Just roll the dice. You might need it for this next uh, <laughs> HD remake. Yes, heavy, heavy air quotes around HD, but hey, it's Secret Agent HD. Uh, Let's just go ahead and get this out of the way. What do you expect at base minimum if you're going to throw HD on something? Because I brought this up in the pre-pre-super shows, and when I I say baseline requirement for HD remake is, by definition of HD, a 16 by 9 resolution. 720p, yeah, 1280 by 720. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's HD. (laughs) I, yeah, I, I, I get. I guess to me, it, it, it's the misnomer of like HD remake. It really just means like a graphical overhaul. It doesn't actually necessarily mean that it is remastered to sixteen nine. Even though in most cases it is. For, yeah. Yeah. Even, even though most people do it right. Uh, yes, how, and uh, the, they did it right with Crystal Caves because these are the same people. Uh, Crystal Caves, the HD remake that was released. So maybe there is an HD mode in there, and they just didn't take screenshots of it i don't know a poogie. but yeah it is the old apoogie secret agent uh which is agent 006 and uh it is if you played crystal caves or any of the keen games it is that game and this along with keen 4 uh or secret of the oracle these were the two that i played the most back in the day so uh yeah that's that's very nice to see you know what? In all fairness, I mean, like a thirty-year-old game, like all right, that's cool. I'll give him three or four bucks for it. That's not a problem. <laughs> seven ninety-nine <laughs> or five pound seventy-nine if you're in the UK. Yeah, it's uh-huh. it's 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 priced the same as the Crystal Caves one. To be fair, <laughs> see the aspect ratio. <laughs> Oh no! I, That's twenty one nine. That that gift is actually twenty one nine. It's not even sixteen nine. I, I don't know. I, 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 I don't give a shit about the 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 four the four by three uh, sixteen nine. Just get that twenty one by nine shit away from me. That's, that's nasty. Hipster. <laughs> but it's the future, Jordan. Right. <laughs> the, the future sucks. The planet's on fire. I'm a lizard man. Leave me alone. It's a fantasy strike, um, man. Uh, okay, you think sports games are scarce? Well, I guess they were technically more scarce than fighting games. This this is true. Yes. We, have, we have this <laughs> and Kings of Kung Fu and uh, Mega Man Punch. And but yeah. The, Skull, the, uh, Skull Girls? Right. I keep forget, everyone forgets about that because Lab Zero <laughs> kind of went kaput. Anyways, Fantasy Strike. It's by a bunch of the guys who made Street Fighter 2. They got a brand new update for July 2021. Uh, they updated some uh, lighting on uh, Rook, Grave, and Set's Key. Uh, they show you the the before and after in uh, the blog post they link to, and it's bar it's marginally better. They 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 look slightly better. I don't know. You can tell they're different pictures. You can, you can yeah, definitely Setsuki's tell their different hair looks nicer. <laughs> he sees, yeah, he's got new tats. See, yes, he, 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 got, he got his rock. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know about the rock guy. Oh, this okay. Now yeah, the rock guy actually looks softer. No. He, okay. This is, there is a little bit of um that bullshit. Remember that find the differences between the two images game. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. The, the the trick is to cross your eyes. Uh, um, I thought you had to look at it in a mirror underwater, but okay. I mean, you can try that. <laughs> upside down. <laughs> New and old. So okay, rock guy looks more cartoony. There's no way. Yeah, he looks softer. They're, they're, he doesn't yeah, look as much like he's made of Rockies. Uh, it, it, it's a lot more uh, cell shady for sure. Like yeah. a, lot, a lot more borderlandsy than like this the, the, one. The, 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 I chunky. Would, the paintbrush lady. I'd have. Uh, I I uh, yeah. I'll just take their word on that. Um, 
That's the ninja lady. The paintbrush yeah. lady is the one with oh, the really fabulous dress. Calm down, there. Yeah. <laughs> we get new costumes. Yeah, yeah uh, paintbrush lady is bottom row. Um, but yeah, so they, they added they added some graphical improvements. It's they're they're, they're nice, I guess. Uh, the other thing they did is they completely overhauled their uh, controller stack. Uh, so uh, there, there's some better uh, there's some better improvements under Linux, and also um, if you have more than two controllers plugged in. Mm-hmm. You can actually determine, you can tell, say, tell the game, this is player one and this is player two, and you can change it, which is super nice. I can I can see this being like super handy for local tournaments that you can go to if you're vaccinated and don't go to them otherwise. But I mean, I mean, like they're, they're, they keep checking on development for this game. Most of the stuff has been like most of the hot new stuff has been paywalled. But again, and since they've moved to free to play, but it's good to see that these updates are still trickling out. They're still concerned about balance. There's also a bunch of like rebalancing notes as well that no one gives a shit about unless you're like pro into fantasy strike. Fair. Uh, yeah, no, uh, I, one of the characters that I, or the character that I played the most when we were, uh, playing around with fantasy strike was the gray. The the dude with the ghost lady behind him, I really like that character. The most cheating character. Yes, character. Yes, of course you. Yeah. <laughs> laser. No, right that's to the it. thing. I re- <laughs> I really like the way that it goes because it combined oh, like no, physical Pedro, attacks with the character. Did they balance the op character? It wasn't op. In fact, <laughs> the um, lady with the brush, she was the op one. She was the first one to get massively nerfed right out of the bat. Uh, but yeah, no, DeGray, um, apparently every single um, ghost move, uh, instead of just the physical attacks, the ghost moves now have one second longer cooldown. Annoying. Uh, it can, the ghost no longer breaks the armor, and uh, the ground stomp... Uh, has been uh, the animation has been increased from five frames to eight frames because there was one particular character that was getting completely shut down uh, on Imaru, which you could just with the ground stop, you could effectively be invulnerable while uh, Onimaru was doing certain attacks against you. So, yeah, no full round of uh, <laughs> of nerfs to the character that I, I actually like to play with. Good. So. Good. I, I, I mean, I, I, I follow a bunch of competitive Street Fighter people just because they're friends of mine, and I hear this shit all the time about like Street Fighter patches, like, "Oh, my main got nerfed. Oh no, no, my reach is short." <laughs> uh, that's that's good times. People get into those fighting games, man. Indeed. Coming up next, Amazon foists their unwanted projects on the Linux Foundation Woo-hoo. and calls it a gift. Also, we got some eggnog. And wouldn't you know it, uh, we, we're we not listening to Snake Jazz just yet, but uh, we, we, we'll get to that. <laughs> well, there it is. Uh, the, yeah, the, um, the news are coming up. We don't have any drivers to speak of this week, but we do have something that was uh, kind of dropped out of nowhere. That, that's going to be interesting. But before we get to that, we need to thank you, all of you who decided, you know what? These three assholes on the internet, uh, they're our at least lovely, glorious reptilian overlords. Yeah. Yeah. Our <laughs> someone really thinks that we're worth supporting. Unfortunately, with the DSers, uh, yeah. none of, it, none no, of this is no. really ah, do very good. Damn it. I mean, damn it. People know, hey, they, they know your heart was in it. They're just not getting the Oh, phone. fuck you, DSer. <laughs> oh, man. If, if, if you want to help us put together an audio system that allows me to embrace my lizard heritage and become the Wanti Overlord Ancient One that I was always destined to become, you can head on over to uh, patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. Uh, become a Patreon. I'm just you thinking get some like cool next week and have a bunch of bed nades. Be like, I got him cut off. Oh uh, yeah, no, no. Uh, n- next week, I'm just being like surrounded, fanned by a bunch of shirtless people. That's where your Patreon money's actually going, people. Uh, yeah, Patreon.com/slash/LinuxGameCast. Become a Patreon. You get cool stuff like access to our Discord channel. If you're an executive producer, you get access to the pre-pre super shows, and where we talk for an hour before we go live here about basically what we're going to talk about on the oh, podcast with a, with a, with a little more Loki to- and Black Widow spoiler talk, I yes. guess. Uh, the, but you know what? It's it's a bit of a grab bag. It's a lot more freeform, a lot more stream of consciousness. So if you like Linux Gamecast, but we talk a little too much about Linux and games for your taste, maybe check out the pre pre super shows. And, if you want the uh, other show a, that we do, yeah. yeah. Also, what the hell yeah. are you doing? 
Uh, I don't know. Maybe they're here for the personality, right? Um, hey, they could be here for the uncut version because we make that available for everybody who is able to help us out. Thank you for that. That is a four hour episode of nonsense available on podcast form. And we make a video. And I know people watch the video because every time I fuck up and forget to put the link on the little Patreon post, I'll, I'll get a message from somebody, not particularly just one person. It's always a different, like, hey, 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 yeah. where's, where's, where's my link? But, uh, <laughs> lots, lots, of, lots of not not so fringe direct benefits from being a Patreon, like um, access to the show notes at a certain level. You can buy your way into the goddamn show. You can RSVP because like I'm playing game multiplayer games on Thursday. Then sometimes playing multiplayer games. Pedro has to be forced to play multiplayer games. But, you know, if you Pretty if much. you want to join in, uh, then, <laughs> you know, being in discord when we ask if someone wants to play some games is a great way to do that. But um, Jordan, gotta, I want to wait until you're in that play in the game. Then then I want to play. Or, or 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 you could just try to guilt me into it like last week. Um, <laughs> I'm I'm, look, I'm looking at someone who will na- remain unnamed in chat realm. Right. Uh, but we got we got we got to thank uh, Kohaku who is a brand new Patreon. Yep. Uh, so executive so producer. That. Brand new executive producer. Get your name in the credits. We got a store store.linuxgamecast.com. Uh, if you have cold blood and you need to increase your body temperature and Linux game cast sweater or t-shirt is probably the best way we to don't increase have sweaters. that court. Yeah. We don't have, we, we no. don't, we have hoodies, right? No, no sweatshirts. Well, I mean, that's no. yeah, but I, I, technically I, I, a hoodie is a sweatshirt. A sw- I it's, a, it's a sweater. <laughs> whatever. Peasants. Don't I'm we had this conversation like three man, years ago, man. If I ask you to pick me up a sweater, you show up with a hoodie. I'm going to slap that shit right out of your hands, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then you can enjoy your dirty hoodie. I don't you know, know what you want it's your floor hoodie. Then. <laughs> no, it's your floor hoodie. I mean, it's a uh, we, we, with the hood. So. A sweatshirt's yeah, well, not a sweater. That's why they have different names, Matthias. There, the, it's inclusive. A sweater, a sweatshirt is a type of sweater. We've we've been over this. <laughs> um, so, so okay, we 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 got we got wish, we got wish, wish lists. If you go to listscamecast.com, put your mouse over the. S- support tab and go down to the wish list. You can buy some stuff for us. We have, um, I have a wish list. Pedro has a wish list. Then has one. You can, uh, there's one for Jill. If you're a weekly daily Wednesday fan. Um, and yeah, you can help us fill out our various respective one studios. Comment on that moth, and I fixed that internet moth picture. It's never been color corrected, not color corrected. The mm. thing. Well then. <laughs> Credit where credit is due, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, uh, if you buy some stuff, you can send us a note. We'll read stuff on the note. And if you send Ben some stuff, you get to be a flashy name behind his head. Yeah. That no one can read, right? No. Now now they can actually read it because uh, How about now? from then on, it's usually dark. So you can actually you can read, read your read name now. Eshop's my new favorite person because. Yeah. Um, Eshop actually came in at just the right time. <laughs> he, ca- he came in at just the right height. You that's mean. prime real estate yes. right there. <laughs> yeah. Indeed. All, All right. right. So let's get into this. Uh, I'm tired of spending money on this thing. I'm just going to force it on the Linux Foundation. Oh, hi, Amazon. Hi, Amazon. Uh, hi, Dan. <laughs> you mean fork O3DE and you can create AAA games and high fidelity simulations. It's something that's built for... Ex- oh, yeah, right. The best I can tell from this, this is uh, kind of a rework of Amazon's Lumberyard, but with all the cool parts left in, allegedly. But it's also nice and open. It's licensed very, very well. So... Um, and you're wondering, what the fuck's the lumber yard? It's the Amazon fork of Crytek from a while ago. If you don't know what Crytek is, you're not alone. They're, they're really, the only game that was making use of that fork really was uh, Star Citizen. Well, it hasn't. I mean, that, it's that, out. That, it's that'll playable. come out in 20. 20- That'll, that'll come out when we can actually travel to other planets, so you won't actually need to pay for Star Citizen. <laughs> that, I, I think, is going to be the permanent reigning champion for early access, but... Mm-hmm. The yeah, to Jordan, what Jordan was saying, Linux Foundation will oversee this project, and they're going to form the Open 3D Foundation. Okay, um, interesting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, uh, the Amazon Lumberyard thing. I remember there was a just one game that was announced that I thought that looked really good. What was that called? So I had a bit of a look into it, and apparently there's two. There's two games that were made with Lumberyard. Uh, Crucible, which came out and was pulled from uh, sale because it was not very good. And the second one, which is called New World, which that was the one that I was thinking of. It was really interesting. And it's not even out and it already has easy anti cheat. But what so about the Top Gear game? Fuck that. Yeah, you, 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 for, you forgot about the most important thing. They released a Top Gear game. 
or not not a Top Gear, which it's was the Grand also Tour from the Grand Tour. <laughs> the, 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 the Grand Tour was built on Lumberyard, and it's fucking, it's absolutely fucking criminal that someone said, "Let's make a Grand Tour driving game," and let's not, and said, "No, we should." Instead of saying we should make a GTA game, but with Jeremy Clarkson, where you can get into fights <laughs> with like production assistants over stakes. You can swear on people. You can go this, to the Isla Clarkson. The moral of this, or at Isla Clarkson, that's going to be <laughs> DLC. Come on, this is twenty twenty one, son. But the Isle of Clarkson DLC. Here's the thing: that game, we went to like, hey, where can you pick up? That game was pulled too. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I, I mean, I mean, I guess that's it for like Crytek or Yum- Lumberyard. Like, yeah, I'm sure a couple projects are going to still try to I use it. I was like, very curious about the old world, um, which is being done with the. Oh, 3D. You got to change the name. It doesn't yep. roll off the tongue. This, this, um, Odie, Odie. Uh, it's kind of horrifying and not, not in the fun way. Like the, okay. You don't really get the effect of just how jacked up this is <laughs> until you get the audio. It's up. Oh, there'll be a link in the show notes. Go check that out. It's bad. Like I, it's yeah. I not you can tell that it's bad because everything is dark and you can really barely see the character. Away. There we go. <laughs> also, <laughs> I'm pretty sure they stole the Githy Yankee model from Baldur's Gate 3. Uh hmm. yeah. <laughs> now, Jordan, you're going to elaborate on this, but I went looking around because you know I'm not a software developer, but I'm usually capable of rubbing out my Mario game in most engines, which I've done so far, which is, hey, I can make a block jump over another block. I'm going to learn, you know, basic physics, you know, collision detection and all this. Everything that I looked up for, not Lumberyard, uh, was a video. Yeah, I, I, I too went to like, okay, well, let's take a look at that. Let's look at the tutorial. And it's just a bunch of YouTube videos. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Is, is all the documentation a YouTube video? And then I went into the actual API references like, oh, okay, there there is actually something here. But, you know, maybe in your tutorial you want to provide some, you know, copy pasta examples that people can start iterating on. No. Maybe. Nope. Yeah, no control left for you. Watch all these bullshit videos. <laughs> and, and here, here, and here, and here's here's the thing. I don't, I don't think even even with a high quality open three uh, D engine like this being open source is going to really shake the Unity uh, Unreal duopoly. Mm-hmm. There's too much developer investment in that ecosystem. But you know what? You know, and it really it really does smack of Amazon being like, we can't monetize this thing for the life of us. Here, Linux Foundation, we're giving you a charitable <laughs> donation, and the Linux Foundation went that uh, only works on Windows. Yeah. The Linux Foundation went, uh, yeah. uh okay, <laughs> sure. We'll, 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 we'll take it. Thank you. So may, may, maybe, maybe TLF can actually spin this off into something that's worth using no, to what, and is, what, is high quality, but Jordan, uh, what Pedro was throwing out throwing that shade currently, but also right now, that just means you can't run the engine on Linux yet, mm-hmm. but the engine in its current form can export Linux by theirs. Yes. No one that, has that, uh, actually well, put yeah. that particular. Thing no one has the actually test. made Wait, games Hang on, hang on. That's that's uh, Pedro, you mean in all the games that have been released with Lumberyard? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's, all it's, three of them. Well, yeah, two. It, one is still being developed. Uh, I mean, I mean, how many of these games can you buy now, Pedro? The yeah. the the point is, you can't really complain about lack of Linux support. <laughs> <laughs> right, you can't really complain about lack of Linux support when like there are zero games available. There, okay, there's one game available. Well, it'll be done eventually. Shut up. Eventually, no, it, you know. You, <laughs> you know what is done though? Wine six twelve. It's yes. out. Uh, if you are not playing around with the protons, or maybe you just want uh, just to run Windows applications, uh, then usually vanilla wine will do you. Um, they have a new release out. Uh, this is 612. It has the blue and classic blue themes, uh, a bunch of fixes for like uh, the Stalker series, uh, Bureau, XCOM, Metal Gear Solid 5, Ground Zeroes, and Rainbow Six Siege. Um, yeah, and just your standard collection of uh, wine bug fixes that, you know, will actually allow you to run the software you want to run on the operating system you want to run them on. Yes, specifically, the uh, it was Call of Pripyat, the last of the original Stalkers. That made full use of DX10. That was a good investment, wasn't it? Uh, and hey, yeah, th- there was yeah, th- th- there was a couple of uh, qu- quirks with that particular game that didn't work so well with regular uh, wine. That's been fixed, and the um, anomaly mod, which basically expands Call of Pripyat to give you access to 
the entire map from the entire uh, original Stalker series, which is awesome. Uh, that didn't work so well. Similar issues. Th- that's been fixed now, too. And if you had a game that required any kind of D3, D11 deferred contexts, you probably weren't going to be running it all that well in Wine. There were severe uh, performance impacts, or the game just wouldn't work at all. Uh, Diablo 3, Dark Souls 3, The Evil Within, Alex, um, Alien Isolation, and Assassin's Creed 3. Some examples that they now give. Now I want to play Alex and Dark Souls Len. Now, now so, so here, here, here's a point that I think <laughs> is worth bringing up. Um, you, might, you might be wondering, well, why would you be trying to run... My genius game idea? Direct- yeah, yeah, why would you be trying to run uh, DirectX 11 under Wyan without Dixvix? That seems like you're asking for problems. Well, I mean, uh, Wine does have their own implementation. They said that DXVK yes. is great and all, but they have their own internal goals for whatever their um, DX11 implementation is. And, you know, having two, having two is good. It means that if one doesn't work, you can try the other one, right? Eventually, yep. maybe. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and yeah, deferred uh, contacts for the 3D11 are now actually implemented, so... That's up and running. Now, I want to throw this out to everyone. Maybe, just maybe, I, uh, you know, uh, I'm using something like Lutris and I'm using wine, but every now and then I want to uh, get some of that sweet, sweet proton sauce all over my face, chest, and neck. But I don't I don't want to, like, try to rip out proton from steam and install all that. Not, is, there, is there an easy way around this? I mean, there, there, there is Lutris. We'll just read it in. But you know, if you want, if you wanted to use non Proton, if you, if you don't like Valve's patch sets yeah. or if they're causing an issue, uh, you can check out Wine GE Custom because you may not know this. Uh, when Glorious Eggroll is not just pumping out custom Proton versions, he actually <laughs> works for Red Hat on the Wine team. So it makes sense that you know he would have a custom build with all the cool funky shit that you might want to play around with. Um, so uh, the six twelve version, on top of the stuff that we previously discussed, has uh, some Epic Game Store fixes for Civilization Six, Borderlands Three, and God's Fall. And apparently he's tested it with some Blizzard games, and they seem to be working fine. I mean, that is until Blizzard Activision starts to get a little. Uh, hey, stabby. it's good to see SSHFS. <laughs> Getting some love. That's my go-to <laughs> thing. It's like, I need network quick and dirty. That'll do it. Yep. Yeah, um, that's in the yeah, best And uh, with these builds, you can just literally download them and ex- extract them to, uh, what is it, dot local share Lutris runners wine. Just extract the file to there, and then you just pick it as a runner. I tested it with the Need for Speed World. And it launches, uh, the uh, launcher shows up, and when you click to start the game, the mod loader application that it comes with, which is the thing that actually injects the custom content from the different servers into the base game, it crashes, which means that there's no custom content, and if you get into a race with anyone that's making use of the custom content, be it like vinyls for the cars or actual custom cars, the game just crashes. So, so it's kind that, of saving you from having to deal hard. with other people's horrendous DLC and stuff like that, right? <laughs> yeah, yes, it, it, but uh, it also it, stops you from playing the game. It's doing you a favor. <laughs> and every way you look at it, it's free. Every up way. Every way, man. <laughs> every way. But yeah, it's better than uh, actual wine in that respect because actual wine, as soon as you get in game, it just freezes. So it's like, okay, yeah, no. <laughs> progress so 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 yes. streaming stuff on linux this twitch is kind of shitty right you've got no good tools for it mm, got a fmpeg i mean i've had that for well over a decade what are you talking about uh, no, got FF, the, uh, ffmpeg's GUI too basic for ffmpeg now v- vlc <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't they have their own built-in codecs yeah <laughs> yeah that, that would be using gstreamer not ffmpeg jordan yeah <laughs> whatever shut up hey i just i just owed you up. i owed you a fucking well actually so i was just waiting for you to dig right. deep enough let's talk about gem nv encode it, this is going to add open gl version of gem nv encode to obs ff impact well that's the plan kids now if you're familiar with windows you know about this this is what they call new nv encode and well this what it's going to do the same thing, man. On Linux, currently it copies the rendered frames back to the system RAM, copies them again into an FFmpeg AV frame, then it makes the FFmpeg load them back into the CPU. That takes a minute. It's a little slow. It's also slightly resource intensive. 
nowhere near as much as say you were trying to encode it, everything on your CPU, as you know, and wonderful thing about NVIDIA encode. Now, uh, this, this is going to skip pretty much all that nonsense. And uh, even the developer who stuck this together has said uh, it decreased CPU usage on his system and just overall load uh, from around, it went from around 25, 30% to around 11. So we're talking make and break performance differences because that, that can change everything. Now, 20% difference is yeah, significant. <laughs> exactly. This was what NVIDIA came out and said, hey, when the Turing first launched, we're going to release this for uh, Windows and Linux. Two years later. Eventually. Right? Linux, you're like, mm, okay, you know, whatever. Um, so <laughs> the big catch right now is only RGB textures are supported. So, you know, you're not going to be able to use it. It kind of like doesn't work at all with NV12, like your Rec 709 stuff, which is what you should be streaming at. Um, we got to wait. We got to wait for that. But this is the right steps in the right direction. So, yes, your Linux NV encode experience has room for improvement and this is a good way to go about it. And he, he does make the point here um, about testing this, you know, using Linux on an i3-4370 with a GTX 1060, that's where the CPU usage decreased from around 2530 to 11. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. On a low end system, that is the difference between, Hey man, I'd like to do the streaming thing, but I can't to, Oh shit. I can actually share my, my GPU actually handles all of the streaming and I can keep using yeah. the CPU for the gaming. Yeah. <laughs> that is great. We can talk about Frank. We do. It's is, is uh, he back from Cuba. Possibly. <laughs> it's a different Frank. Uh, this one is uh, from cataclysm dark days ahead, which if you don't know, how long have you been running Linux? And uh, you're not a true roguelike uh, fan, so hand in your card at the door, please. But no, uh, Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead is one of those games that I... Honestly, I'd forgotten about it until I saw this in the notes. Uh, <laughs> version not point F uh, is currently available. And there's a bunch of new stuff. There's uh, nested containers to rationalize inventory management. Uh, there's achievements to actually track what you've been doing. It's achievements. You know what they are. There's a bunch of performance enhancements uh, throughout the game, which if if you played the game in the past, you, you run into the situation where the map opens up and then despite it being a tile set based roguelike as you usually get, it would chug. Uh, but yeah, the <laughs> if you've never tried it, I suggest you at least do. Uh, Cataclysm or CDDDA is uh, one of those interesting games. And the moment you start it, it asks you to pick your cu fully customize your character, fully customize the world, fully customize any of the uh, mechanics that the game offers you. I don't want to build your game for you. So I just. I downloaded it. I went with the defaults and said, let's go. And I immediately got swarmed by seven zombies and I died. <laughs> so, so yeah, can you that, like, that, explain, that cause this, this has fallen afoul of like fuck screenshots. Well, I mean, it, <laughs> it a, a lot of the screenshots are just going to be out of uh, terminal, right? <laughs> like it's primarily an end Chris's game. Also, if you want to try it out, maybe don't try it out on uh, fedora. Apparently the, the builds are busted. According to their little mm -hmm. packaging status thing, Arch and uh, Debian are your and FreeBSD. If you if you really want to play this game, FreeBSD <laughs> is uh, is where you is where you want to play it. Um, hmm. But yeah, uh, I mean, tech specs ro ro bleh, rogue lights. They're good for when you're doing deployments late at night and you need something you can do in a terminal. I don't know, man. We get a, yes. Why did they call it Frank again? That's just like because the release it's, is it's, F. F is for Frank. Yes, at not point F. Frank. So Frank, it's made me think of you, Frank. <laughs> Frank. Frank's still all over my deck trying to get me to. Uh, like, does anybody like work at a uh, do anything with, like photo restoration? Mm. No, I was asked to no. do one of those ones. 
I don't know, man. It was just a bunch of pixel copying. <laughs> I, I, I can restore the MS Paint titties on every on every picture I'm given. Frank's just gotten all fucking nostalgic. He's digging out these old ass photos. He's like, oh, can you do something about like that picture I got from nursing school? And I'm like, I can't do anything with that, man. Nah. That shit's too old. You got to colorize it. Ugh, I'm not going to mess with it. You can take it to a professional. Oh, what do we got up next? Riot music? Oh, hmm. Fashion. <laughs> Un- nope, no. Incorrect, Pedro. No. This, this is more like um, a lo-fi. <laughs> Hi, Pedro. Beats. How you doing? <laughs> not, not bad, Pedro. How's it going, Pedro? <laughs> Who was doing the oons? I was. Oh, Jordan. It sounded like I wasn't paying either of you any attention. Um, oons, oons. This is from Riot Games, and they've released a reasonably sized. Um, does it, uh, how many tracks do it before I talk too much shit? Oh, come on! Put the tracks on here, people. No, you, you, you gotta go is. to the Spotify channel. There it is. 37 yeah. track <laughs> album collection music developed in partnership with a number of talented musicians. And this is completely free. You can use it for commercial purposes. I went through it. Um, I'm going to be honest. I didn't have anything. You can just straight up download the album session. It's the big blue button. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And it's completely great or safe. I just wanted to give them a mention because that that's really cool. And you can use this for your streams or, um, Anything like that? Next project, music, go yeah. for it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, like th- this is kind of out of left field for Riot, but you know, more royalty f- free music is always nice. So you know, good, good on you. Hundred percent. And yeah, just listen to it. it. Won't cost you anything. And it's all waves too. It's not uh, MP3s. I had to break out my um, Vinstone MP3 wave Convertitron script. After I found it in our Discord of all places, <laughs> like I'm not typing this out again. <laughs> um, that was hunting back, but. Yeah, go go yoink it. It's all lo-fi ambient type stuff. Not like, not a lot of metal, but that's okay. Some people don't need that in their life. Yeah, they're, <laughs> it's they're, 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 they're dummies. <laughs> all right, coming up next, we're throwing chairs at Wildermuth. It's wild mythology. <laughs> Welcome back to the Chair Position. This week, we're taking a look at Wildermuth, developed by World Walker Games, LLC, done on LibGDX, a custom engine built on Java. Uh, you can pick it up for about 25 bucks US. What is it? Wildermuth follows heroes over their whole careers, from their pitchfork days to their powerful primes into on and on into old age and memory. It's a party-based procedural storytelling RPG where tactical combat and story decisions will alter, will alter your world and reshape your cast of characters. Uh, so we got to thank World Walker for sending us keys. Awesome. I guess I'll go first. Uh, I guess I'll go first because why not? Uh, so on Fedora 34, 64-bit with the uh, R93900X and the GTX 1080i, yeah, it, uh, it launches out of the box. It holds 60. It's not graphically demanding in the least. Uh, the art style really, really re- reminds me of like your average early 2000s webcomic. Um, but it does use this to its advantage because the paper doll style actually allows you to like modify and add like clothing layers to the, the character drawings. And so as you customize their equipment and as they age and whatnot, you get your character in the dialogue bits, which a lot of games kind of ignore. And I thought was a very nice touch. Um, the soundtrack is just some generic medieval tootling. And while the DualShock 4 controller worked, I ended up playing it with mouths and keyboard as for fun. Remember, remember Massive Chalice, you guys, that the, that nifty strategy mm-hmm. game from Double Fine that had your characters grow old and die as time went on. So you needed to selectively breed them, breed your heroes so that all your units would have the best stats and classes and also hemophilia. Uh, well, I mean, it was it was pretty fun, um, although the, the implementation was a little mediocre, especially out of the, the non combat stuff. Um, but World Walker decided to take another crack at it, and I would say the end result's pretty good. I mean, realistically, it's only marginally better than Massive Challenge, or Massive Chalice, but that's not a bad thing by any stretch. Uh, the combat is your standard grid-based XCOM style. Everything plays as you expect if you've done one of these grid-based tactical jammies before. But be careful, because the AI will not fuck around. If you put yourself out of position, they'll be like, oh, is your caster exposed? Let's just beeline to it, because fuck you. (laughs) Um, One minor gripe I had was that all of your units kind of look the same, especially early on. So when it's giving when it's giving you the next character, I've misclicked the wrong square because I'm like, fuck, I thought it was this guy. And so I've wasted several Mm -hmm. turns just like walking out of position. I really wish they would make that a little more clear, but. That's a, it's a nitpick. Um, it, I think mostly it has to do with the, uh, the Tim B, you, you know, Buckley esque, like control all dead Dell styles characters. They all look the fucking same. Um, 
And yeah, uh, what the one thing that really struck me was the uh, mapping and exploration segment because you go to various US, it's a hex crawl. You go to various areas, you can clear them out, you can build your settlement, time passes, and stuff happens, which is really cool. The overworld really reminds me of uh, Final Fantasy Tactics A2 Grimoire of the Rift, and I love that fucking game to death. So any sort of reminder to it is pretty good. Um, and the character stuff is fun too. Um, your characters are all randomly generated, but like you get to decide uh, whether or not they like each other, whether they hate each other. You get these little vignettes and you get a lot of marriage and narrative, which gets you it, it does the Nuzlocke thing, right? It gets you attached to your characters so that when they die, you're like, ah, damn. Not only did I spend a lot of time of like um, growing him, I'm slightly emotionally invested in this guy. Um, so, yeah, um, that, that's pretty fun. It's a pretty solid tactical roguelike. It's got online multiplayer. Then and I connected. So it basically looks like, um, at least from the overworld perspective, multiple people can control the same uh, overworld stuff. So you can split your you will eventually accrue a bunch of party members that you can't use at once. So you can sort of split that off. I don't know how the combat works because we didn't get around to testing that. But uh, maybe maybe someone else can send us some hate mail about that. Other other uh, that. Regardless, I'm going to give it three chairs. It's really solid. I liked it. Pedro? Yeah, and it's uh, surprising how much you can accomplish with very simple looking uh, graphics. Uh, over here on the Ryzen 7 3700X with the GTX 1080, it launched out of the box. It's locked at 60 and 2560 by 1440 or whatever resolution you happen to be running at because it's Java. Uh, it, and the VSync button uh, in the options menu is a lie. It's always 60 and it's always going to be 60. The dual sense, it worked out of the box. Even Java nowadays, it can handle the dual sense. That is uh, kind of awesome. The... Um, there's some weirdness with playing with the controller. I'll get onto that later. Uh, you're much better off with the mouse and keyboard. I'm. If you're looking at the video version, I'm actually playing with the controller. I played with the controller throughout the whole recording, so you can see exactly what I mean. As for the fun, yes. Yes, it is fun. I do like the procedurally generated content, which keeps all of the events feeling pretty fresh as you progress. There's very little repetition in the stuff that you do. I mean, the combat is always going to be the combat. It, you got it makes lucky use in the, this fight. Uh, I, I, got, I got lucky they, in a lot of fights because I <laughs> kicked a lot of ass. No, 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 was no, no. Easy no. for me. In 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 this fight, they started me off in the middle of a pincer situation, so I just got completely fucked. Oh, okay. <laughs> they're like, oh, they're yeah, coming no, at you in a straight line. One end lucky. of the map. Yeah, yeah, it started me off at one end of the map, and the enemies were on the other. So it's like, okay. But yeah, yeah the uh, it makes use of the XCOM, Menemy Unknown, or the Shadowgrounds video games rule set uh, in, a, in a more traditional fantasy medieval-ish RPG, RPG setting. There's a couple of uh, steam-powered machines that you encounter as well. Uh, but yeah, that, that that's about as far off uh, the tr traditional fantasy setting as it goes. And simple as it may look, because it, the, the characters are paper cutouts, effectively, um... It is, it does a fantastic job of telling a fantasy story that's completely random and it's always going to be completely different. And I haven't played far enough yet, but as your characters get older or just die for some, you know, unfortunate circumstance, uh, you get to keep playing in the same world. And that's the kind of thing that's different from your typical roguelike because, oh, you're dead in a roguelike. Okay, scratch that start from the beginning completely randomly generated you don't get access to all the previous stuff that you did here you do that's the whole point and you can find the evidence of what you previously did with the older characters it's really well done and yeah if you fix the controller weirdness where the move slash attack cursor starts on the same relative coordinates as it was on the previous battle um and in the new battle Instead, just start the cursor where the character is. I bumped the microphone arm there. Uh, then, yeah, you've got yourself a very good sit back and play experience on the TV box, for example. I really enjoyed it. Three chairs. Hi. I've been stuck. <laughs> All right. You know where this is going, but let's get it out of the way because I need to chime in. Uh, Let's talk about uh, it's running on my system 1920x Threadripper, 32 gigs of RAM, 2060, all the fun stuff. 
split it UHD. No problems. I mean, it does launch. Now, I will say on a technical aspect, full screen. When I went to full screen, it only went to my leftmost monitor, which was a little bit unfortunate. But if you launch it in window mode, it goes to the correct monitor, the one that's set as the primary display. And they even tell you at the bottom, if you hit Alt, Enter, it'll go full screen. And then it will full screen on the correct monitor, which was nice. Outside of that, everything else worked. No complaints whatsoever. I didn't try it with a controller. I never would have thought to uh, try to play something like this with a controller. But hey, there we are. Now, I will say to the developers, you drastically underestimated my inability to play these types of games. You did. You know, I took the time to set up my three characters out of the gate, do all the stat nonsense, and I kind of made them look like, you know, some people who do a podcast you might know. Then I got myself killed in the tutorial, kids. I did. <laughs> They, you weren't expecting that level of incompetence, were you? Uh-uh. I, I can tell you, I hope you weren't, because the game wiped all of my guys and said, start again from scratch, fucko. Like, ouch. Ouch. I was, I was giving you a fair shake. And did I got to do that? At least start me back at the beginning with all the time, the stats and stuff that I put in. Nope. That right there is um where I would have tapped the refund button if I'm going to be honest, but for the sake of the review, I did another run and you just default that time. I wasn't going through that again because I might die again, whatever. I mean, it's turn-based stuff to me. You click, you wait, you click, then you get punished or rewarded by baby R and Jesus. Uh, end of story. Plenty of story though. Speaking of that and the art to go along with it, with this one, um, if you've ever really wanted that medieval paper, Mar paper Mario, this, this really has you covered and production wise. This team did a fantastic job um, with it. I mean, it looks and sounds great. Yes, the background music, the medieval noodling, that that gets old. But hey, I mean, you're kind of like leaning and looking for something at that point. But y'all motherfuckers, um, those next buttons, you need to pick a spot for them. Because you put them <laughs> yeah. all, all over the goddamn place. <laughs> and when you have a 3840 by 2160 display, that's a lot of, oh, sometimes it's in the middle, sometimes it's down kind of in the middle, my, on the my, bottom, my, to the my, right. My favorite part is where they put it right under the Steam notifications. <sighs> so if you ever get like an achievement or whatever, <laughs> that fucker is hidden from you forever. <laughs> so yeah, keep that in mind. Maybe go back and rework then kind of centralize those somewhere. Now, you know them. Turn base is not my jam, never has been, probably never will be. That said, they slipped in online multiplayer, so I'm, you know, Jordan and I did a connection. Like, hey, it connected. Unfortunately, everyone in my party was dead except for one person, so we didn't really get to play anything. But I might drag one, if not both of these yahoos into a game just to see how long they can put up with me legitimately trying to play the game though not give griefing them in any way shape form or fashion to see who rage quits first because somebody's gonna go fuck this i can't deal with this motherfucker <laughs> but yeah i mean technically competent game no problems whatsoever you get a solid two chairs uh clean bill of health i mean what is it 24.99 24.99 it's it's a little yep. pricey but i think the quality is there for sure i i i think I might enjoy playing it a little bit with people who have some idea how these mechanics work better than I do. It is yeah. surprisingly uh, well done because when I saw the graphics, this isn't the first game that I saw with this particular art style. It's like, oh, that person's getting a lot of work, which is good. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, that was surprisingly uh, fantasy what? XCOM. I like <laughs> one thing I, I got to give credit to. I really like the magic system, actually, um, where you enchant various objects and it's very it's like very positional based, very tactical based. It reminds me a lot of Dungeons and Dragons fourth edition with that. And I really like fourth edition d, &D. It, it gets and a lot of hate, different but, objects give you different attack spells. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it, it's 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 very positional. And if you want to make the most of your uh, your spellcaster, you got to use your fighters movement abilities to like move them into the ranges and, and shit. It's it's pretty fun. I, I quite enjoy the uh, the game design here. And you Hold could on. even use a frying pan as a weapon. So, yes. Yes. I picked a spoon <laughs> for my wizard because I'm just like spoon. <laughs> All right, well, that's going to do it for that. Coming up next, we got some hate mails. And 
we, we get some confirmation whether Nixon's pyramid actually exists. Mm-hmm. It's the end. Yes, you've made it this far. Congratulations. You've probably didn't make it this far. Uh, organically speaking, you probably just skipped to the end, but that's fine. Be that's quiet, okay. background you, music. I don't like it when you, you break the fourth wall. You became a Borg <laughs> drone, and then you made it to the end of the podcast because it's playing throughout the collective. Yes, you you just press that skip button and everyone else was shouting at you. Or you not, imagine, because no you one was actually paying you attention. Back and ha- have a think about somebody watching on whatever passes for the internet archive like 200 years from now stumbling across like, what the, what's going on? Hi. <laughs> The oh, fuck? no. We've no, been I, dead I, for a I, long time. I imagine attention spans have gotten to the point where everything is just a cacophony and we're like one voice in there. And someone's going to pick that out and be like, ha, huh, what the fuck are these guys talking about? That's going to be, well, you know, I really liked <laughs> Max Headroom's take on like advertisements uh, with like, what do they call them? Blipverts, where they compress yeah. the advert into like mm-hmm. three seconds, but it caused people to explode. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. I, I so, so I, I take it that's where you got the idea for our plug section. I genuinely want to cause people to explode, Jordan, in the future. I f- True story. When I used to work at a gas station while cars were driving by, I would just be shouting randomly, explode, in the hope when, when no one was around, in the hopes that one day one of them would explode. And I'd be like, <laughs> yes. So, Pedro Mateus, if you would like, uh, if somebody at home would like to contribute to content for the future and hopes and possibilities of causing them to explode. How could mm-hmm. you go about that? You can do that in a multitude of different ways. The best way to do it is to go to legsgamecast.com. You hit the contact button. There's a form you got to fill a bit of uh, caveats at the top that you may or may not want to read, but if you don't read them, well, that's on you. LGC weekly is the show that you want to <sighs> send your hate mail to. Otherwise we may be misinclined to, uh, Take it as some uh, constructive feedback, or you can even ask Jordan for relationship advice if you'd like. I completely forgot to remind Ven about that hate mail that we said we were going to do three weeks ago. Damn. Next week, we promise. Next, next, it's, it's happening. That's, I swear. I swear. <laughs> All right. Uh, this comes from one of our patrons. And if one thing yes. we can fucking do, if anything else, is we can give uh, some traction. And some ears to other Linux produced uh, stuff. This one's music. Who wants to tell me about it? Yes. I'll Abstraction it, is uh, is back. Uh, and you may remember that the Nixon's Pyramid was a bit of a contentious point in our credits for a while. Well, here it is. The uh, fourth debut uh, album is uh, here. It's a four-track experimental th- uh, synthesizer album that's been released uh, has been recorded and produced on Linux using Ardor, Mixbus 32C, and Jack D. Open source your uh, rack synthesizer modules by Emile Gillet w- of Mutable Instruments uh, were paramount in writing the album's tracks. Other hardware such as Electron's Octatrack and Analog 4, although not open source, pay technical debt to the C64 seat, uh, SIT chip and they are manageable using a MIDI via Bash or your desired shell. So, yes, thank you very much, Abstraction, for the heads up. And if you are at all interested uh, about... Uh, cassettes, very, CDR, VHS, yeah. mini disc, and 8-track. The, there's a limit of 100 cassettes, though, so you got to get it now if you yes. really want that. Uh, or <laughs> and sorry, it's only $7 cassettes. for the cassette, so... It's going to be $700 for the working work boombox, because <laughs> the I'm, one you have in your garage is busted. I am going to be real. <laughs> might might have sprung for a um, 8-track. Not going to lie. How many songs yeah. do we get here? Uh, four songs. Four. Anxiety of Nations. Zoo, Courtship of Nations. And American Meadows. Wait. Now, both of you were able to give it a listen well it's our review of our linux produced music jam it's very very ambient um if you're if you do do not take this the wrong way but if you are looking for music (laughs) that has a point this is not it um (laughs) that's how you know the if you are looking for your typical definition of a song this ain't it yeah this this is on so so it's like grateful dead uh, no, 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 no. This wouldn't go amiss at the uh, as the background music of a new Fallout game. That was the general vibe I was getting from it. Uh, but yeah, it is not. 
they're not songs. It's definitely yeah. music. Back backing <laughs> tracks, absolutely. But emphasis yeah. on experimental. <laughs> emphasis on experimental. If you yeah. if you like if you like weird shit and people just trying stuff, definitely definitely give this look. Uh, if you're looking for something to like jam out to, yeah. it's not that kind of it's not that kind of. Give it a sample. There'll be a link in the show notes. But that's going to do it for our hate mail this week. Next week, we promise. We promise to probably forget again, um, like halfway through. And Ab- absolutely, that'll be a thing because uh, that's us. <laughs> <laughs> on that bombshell. We're going to cue the music. You'd always find us around right here at Twitch around. I think we're always right around 830 Eastern Standard Noon time. 730 for patrons. Pre pre super shows and put your face in it. We'll be there talking some mad shit uh, that we don't necessarily like to put out in the wide blue yonder. Get in touch with me just at Vinstone on Twitter or at Vin at mast.linuxgamecast.com. I'm Jordan Svung. I'm going to be starting up a new experimental music group called Roosevelt Riggledesk. Ziggurat. Oh. And uh, yeah, uh, you can find out more about that on uh, Twitter <laughs> at The Burning Fool or uh, twitch.tv slash Burning Fool. Uh, no, uh, I was going to make the pun with soccer knees, but n- I'm, I'm, soccer I'm, I'm, knees. I'm going to yes. <laughs> just not going to do that. So I am Peter Mateos. You can find me at Unaccounted4 on Twitter. And yeah, you, I may or may not reply to you. Beautiful people, thanks for showing up. And we're going to thank you again for supporting the show with some credits. Yes. Yeah. Oh, man. You know, it's, it's, it's the main benefit of giving someone money on the internet is being able to hear them say your name at the end of a production or sometimes during a production. Uh, well, we got to thank all the people and give them what they want. So we got to thank our executive uh, producers. Thank you, episode who, CDLX. I, wait. Yeah, yeah. We got to thank uh, Omegas, Arthurin, our executive producers. Uh, we got Aldi S. Barbaramp, Scott Michaud, Mr. Fox Dog, Atomic Ass, Mike G, Empty, Drummer Seven, Holy Toast, and Kohakua, and our Kohakut. And you know what? Nixon's pyramid is himself. Abstraction and Darkwing and yes. our, uh, Chicago Kicks here. Sea Monsters, Jack B, Ronaldo, and Ryder X Mac, and a Truggy, Veritanuta, Justin Froskel, and KY Linux cast. And the person who will never know, Pedro, you're behind us eating banana. I told you about that. Yes, Gerandus, uh, specifically. Thanks for the follow. And the Death Notes, Nova K, Basil, Chad, Romeo, Marson, Sisson T, Craig, Rene, Leonardo, DeCresny, Kim, Smashley G, Chris, Stephen Jill, Benjamin, Doom 2.1, Stephen B, and Dirty D. Thunder Cheap. Plato Socrates. Yes. <laughs> uh, I don't know what a special about these knees. Plato Socrates. Is, <laughs> Monica and Oil of a Plato Soccer Knees. Soccer Knees. And soccer nine, knees. Thank you all so very much. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Done. Bye bye. This, this is all around. <laughs> Can't hear it because the DSR. Five dudes.